Learning deep technical content, whether it be coding, machine learning, data science, deep learning, or even things like blockchain, can be a bit of a struggle sometimes. You've probably been there before. Maybe you open up your laptop, you start writing a couple of lines of code, you go through a tutorial, you try to dig a little bit deeper, but things just aren't sticking. Or worse yet, you write something one day and you come back to it and you really have just forgotten how things exactly work. This is a common struggle and staying motivated when it comes to learning deep technical content can be a bit of a challenge. So how is it that I deal with this? Now, why do I have to deal with this? Well, in my role as data science and AI specialist, looking after the Asia Pacific region or the ASEAN ZK region, if you wanna be specific, means that I have to look after well over 65 products. Now, I need to have deep technical expertise when it comes to talking about these things. And they're not simple products. It might be things like looking at automated machine learning pipelines or deep cognitive search. How do I stay motivated when it comes to learning each of these different technical components? This is exactly what I wanted to talk to you about today. Because believe me, I do struggle. It's not some innate talent that allows me to pick up new concepts and new technical components every single day with the drop of a hat. There's probably not too many people that can do that in the world. So how is it that I stay motivated? Let's jump into it. So first things first, I really want you to know that motivation, whilst being important, plays a small part in the grand scheme of things. Showing up and consistently coming back to that technical content is going to serve you way longer than simply having motivation. Every single morning after I've made my cup of coffee, I'll jump onto my computer and I'll write five lines of code. Now, it might be the most rubbish five lines of code you've ever seen in your life but I will do it every day. I will turn up and I will put in the effort to be able to get a little bit better at that technical content. If you actually read James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, he talks about the value of applying and getting better by 1% a day. This is exactly what I try to do because ultimately the impact of getting 1% better each and every day equates to 37 times better by the end of the year. Now the next most important thing, and this is where I think motivation actually comes in, is picking difficult things. Now there's this famous quote, and I've actually got it written down with my goals. Make no little plans. They have no magic to stir men's blood and probably will not themselves be realized. Make big plans, aim high in hope and work, remembering that a noble logical diagram once recorded will never die but long after we are gone will be a living thing asserting itself with ever growing insistency. I think that that one quote embodies why picking big, challenging, hard topics is going to motivate you a lot more. No one ever got motivated by pushing themselves to write print hello world, but taking on a big topic like building a next generation deep learning model or building your own startup. These are the things that help keep you motivated. You'll know, and you've probably seen this before, that you might pick a small task and you might learn to focus on building that up, which is great. But really quickly, you're going to be able to accomplish that task. And losing that habit of consistently going and learning and developing and becoming better and more proficient in that topic will end because you've mastered it really quickly. This is why picking a big, complex topic and consistently coming back to it and learning and adapting and getting better at that thing is going to make you so much better in the long run and going to help you stick to the goal of learning that technical content. This consistently happens to me. I wanna build a YouTube tutorial to be able to teach the subscribers on this channel and I'll pick something relatively simple. Let's say, for example, a text classifier. There's a ton of tutorials out there on that particular topic. So I'll start building it, I'll start coding it, and really quickly I'll sort of get the idea and I'll be able to build it. And then I lose motivation because I'm like, ah, oh, it's okay, but there's nothing really all that great about it. Whereas right now I'm building a language translator model using transformer architectures. So something which is relatively new and is producing state-of-the-art results. I am consistently writing my five lines of code to get just that little bit better to build that language transformer model. This is why picking hard things is such a smart strategy. It's going to keep you motivated because you are doing things which could potentially change the world. Now, whilst doing that, I think it's very important to keep your head down. And what I mean by this 
is to stop looking at what other people are doing around you. This can be one of the most disheartening and demotivating things that you can do for your own personal progress. I've done it and I've been there before. I'll open up my phone, I'll log on Twitter, I'll see that people are building state-of-the-art models, somebody's just raised some new funds for their startup, another person has managed to create this amazing tutorial that goes for 15 hours long, and it's demotivating. But don't compare yourself to others. Focus on your own journey. I still struggle with this every single day, but I know when I'm actually doing it. I can tell when I'm just mindlessly scrolling through different social media accounts, whether that be LinkedIn or Twitter or Reddit. As soon as I notice that I'm quickly falling into that habit of switching between different tasks and looking at what other people are doing, I quickly begin to realize because my energy starts to reduce that I'm probably not doing the right thing. So stay in your lane and focus on your personal development and focus on getting better at what you want to do because everybody else has a different goal. You need to focus on yours. We talked about picking really big goals, which can often seem insurmountable. If you wanted to go and build, let's say for example, what Centex is doing on YouTube, creating AI that's able to play StarCraft. This is an absolutely massive undertaking. So how do you break this down to be able to stay motivated while building something of that level of sophistication? Well, this is where you gotta eat the elephant. Now, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Taking your complex task or complex technical component and destructuring it into its sub parts is going to make achieving those sub little goals just that little bit easier. That way, at the end of the day, you've got something that you can tick off your list that you have either mastered or learned a little bit more about, thereby achieving that 1% better goal, which I think you should be setting. This is a particularly important thing to do when you are learning monster concepts. I didn't start out by deciding I was going to become an absolute wizard at deep learning. And to this day, I don't consider myself one. The first thing I did was decided that I just wanna build a simple deep learning model, something which I'm passionate about. And this is where the sign language tutorial that you've probably seen on the channel has came from. I decided that I wanted to build something that I hadn't seen floating around, which used advanced concepts, and I started breaking that down into its sub parts. I took a look at what I could learn, what I was already across, and what I needed to focus on. Breaking down complex topics into their subparts is actually something that you've probably seen before. If you actually read Tim Ferriss's book, The Four Hour Chef, he actually talks about his own method of ultra learning and breaking down different components of technical concepts, whether they be cooking, which can be quite technical, or coding, or playing the drums, or learning how to drive a rally car. Taking broader technical concepts and breaking them down into smaller, bite-sized non-elephant chunks is going to help you stay on that road a little bit longer. Okay, so we've gone and broken down our deep technical concept. Now, what is quite possibly one of the most important things that I do to stay motivated? Funnily enough, it's stepping away. After I've written my five lines of code every single day, I will completely move away from my computer. Now, you've probably been here before. You're writing a couple of lines of code and you get an error. You think to yourself, oh, I can spend five or 10 more minutes and try to grind it out through this technical concept. I'll work out how to solve this error. If I just write a couple more lines of code or Google a couple more things, I'll eventually get it. But often what you'll realize is that by stepping away and approaching the problem a little bit later on, you give your brain the time to marinate. That's a weird thing to say. By allowing your brain the time to think about a technical concept without being actively involved, it really helps to bolster how you're actually learning those things. Now, I actually encountered this exact same phenomenon literally yesterday. I was building my transformer model, which was meant to convert languages, and I just couldn't get the concept of the query, the key, and the value. Now, overnight, I developed my own visual imagery, which basically went along the lines of kumquats can't vault. 
Now, remembering these, that visual imagery, so imagine a kumquat like running up to the pole vaulting stadium, jumping over and like absolutely smashing himself. So remembering that structure and that order, if you've seen Transformers before, you probably might have seen the concept of QKV, but if you actually take a look, it's actually quite an involved concept in terms of working out how this model works. But by taking that time away from writing code, I was able to give my brain a little bit of room to breathe thereby ensuring that I don't lose motivation when learning a really deep and technical set of architectures. And that is truly it. Those are the five key things that I do to stay truly motivated when learning deep technical content. I turn up every single day. I pick difficult things that I'm interested in that I actually wanna learn. I ignore what other people are doing, albeit sometimes I fail. I eat the elephant one bite at a time and I step away when I need to. Hopefully these couple of tips have been useful and maybe they help you learn something new or build your very own deep learning model along the way. Thanks again for tuning in guys. Peace.